I heard that they were doing auditions, sent my tapes, they came back to me and said, look, sorry, um, you haven't made it. I'm like, huh? And they go, no, you haven't made it. Honestly, I begged them. I said, please give me a chance. I know I can do this. I can do it. Please give me an opportunity. And they said, look, applications have closed. It's finished. You've missed the cut. So I, I, just, I just kept on hounding them. That's why I always say that people never go up. I kept on hounding. I said, I'll fly my way down. Finally, they said, okay, long story short, we'll fly down. Flew down, borrowed my grandfather's car, drove to the audition, did the audition. Halfway through the audition, they stopped me and they said, we've seen enough. Basically, they said, you know, you are just terrible. So, and so they literally stopped me and I just go, went out to my car and I burst into tears, sobbed all the way home because I knew I'd blown my own only opportunity. And then, and that was, I didn't get the job. And then about three months, four months later, telephone came to Nelson. I read some pledges and it went okay. And what now rang me and said, we've got a job for you. So, yeah. We had to do everything. We had to write our own music reviews, perform your own music re reviews, present them. Then you had the live television aspect. So we wrote, we, we recorded, um, we did sketches and comedy stuff. And, and it was ne I never saw it as a stepping stone. I guess that was probably a good thing. In hindsight, it was a stepping stone. But for me, it was never a stepping stone. I never saw it as that. I loved the show. I loved having my, the involvement with the young people. So it was just, I was into it boots and all. And then I got offered a job presenting uh, on the breakfast show at ZM and also doing Face the Music, a game show. And so I just couldn't do everything, but I didn't want to leave. I just couldn't fit everything in. Vanessa gets into bed and I'm like, oh my goodness, I gotta get my clothes off. And I just, I was like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. But I saw all the crew there, I'm like, oh man. So I took my clothes off, got into bed. <laughs> And I mean, Vanessa's an actress. I'm not. I was a television presenter from a kids' show. So I get into bed and I'm supposed to sort of be passionate and sort of make a pass to it. And all I can feel is, I mean, all I can feel is her prickly legs. It's all I can feel is her legs prickly. I'm like, oh, I can't do this. And Gaylene said, Come over here. Got, I got out of bed. She said, you, you do this. And so she said, You've got to be passionate. Um, what was the word she used? I want you to um, be in raptures or something like that. So I'm like, I get back in a bit, and I just can't do it, and it's so wooden, it's awful. And then finally, Galen gets real cross with me, and she takes me outside, and she says, you are an actor. And I'm like, I'm not an actor. I'm a kid's presenter, lady. I don't want to do this. So anyway, I did the very best I could do, but most of it ended up on the cutting room floor. When it went to the movies, there was just this one tiny scene of us waking up, me with this gimpy smile on my face, because I've been in raptures, obviously, but I couldn't express that. I don't know, the actors, real actors, are, are very good. They're worth every cent, yeah. Face the Music was probably kind of my first prime time thing. It was only supposed to be a short-lived eight-week run. Ended up being really successful and rating really well, so it stayed on air for a lot longer than that. And it was great, you know, I loved the, the, the show itself was fun. It wasn't onerous, um, the contestants were great. But it was a really good introduction to just seeing human dynamics and how people respond to pressure. And on the set of Face the Music, there was like we had a hard core of the set, a circular core, and then round the outside of the set was inflatable tubing, like a bouncy castle. And this is without a word of a lie, three contestants lined up, so they all had their pods with their hands on their buzzer. I was kind of where you were as the host. And I saw one guy in the middle, and you can tell they just get so nervous. And his eyes started rolling back in his head, and I thought, oh, this guy's in bad shape, you know, he started getting tense. And, and then all of a sudden, right when I asked a question, he just, he fainted disappeared off the set, fell into the inflatable tubes, which enveloped him, and he disappeared. But no joke, the other two contestants, they're like, they're like, they're like this, and they see the guy disappear, and he, and he faints and goes, and they go, back to the question. They didn't even care about this bloke who'd been consumed by the set. And so it was a really interesting thing for me, watching the pressure that people put themselves under and how they respond to that. So it was fun, it was fun. Clash of the Codes, again, was enormous fun because it was in the field, so unlike the studio base of What Now or Face the Music, Clash of the Codes, it was 12 different sporting codes, three great athletes from each code. Paul McDonald, an Olympic gold medalist, he selected the athletes, and in hindsight, he was a real visionary because he chose people like Hamish Carter before he was a gold medalist, Sarah Ulmer before she competed, you know. The All Blacks at that, po at that time was Zan Brock and Ant Strawn and Mark Ellis, and those guys were on it. And that was just, for me, um, Again, it was, I was intrigued by how capable these athletes were. And the most impressive of all these young, dynamic, gifted athletes, the most impressive of all was a 41-year-old, Ian Ferguson, who had won three golds. He was at the top, he would sort of gone over the hill, for want of a better term, and he blew a lot of them out of the park with his, with his heart and his fitness 
unreal. So that show took off and it was really successful and a lot of fun too. The thing that they tried to do with that was make it real. And that was probably a big mistake because none of those celebrities actually had their voices tweaked at all. It was really raw. And that was supposed to add colour to the show, but it's pretty hard when you've got a backing track or a band and then it's just like, it's like singing in the shower. Overall, it was probably pretty reasonable. I think the show was cancelled early, though. And again, that's you can't help but be affected. You, you know, you, your own ego takes a bit of a hit if they can a show because you feel responsible. So I think that was scheduled for 16 weeks and we ran it for 10 and... It just wasn't a success, and you just cop that on the chin and move on. I thought Treasure Island would be like all TV, which was kind of fake, but it was so not fake. It was real. We didn't eat. I lost 10 kilograms in about nine days. I just, just shed it, and um, people got sick. Lana nearly died, had to be airlifted back to hospital. She was genuinely a whisker away from dying, no beat up. We weren't even going to put the show to air because the producers got hold of us and said, look, this show may never see the light of day because Lana is really fighting for her life. And so like, you don't care about the show, you care about Lana, of course. But it was really touch and go. I, I had already won because in people's eyes, nobody expected me to be there. I didn't expect to be there. Josh Kronfeld packed himself. The night before, I got on really well with him. I loved him. He's a top, top guy. And he said to me, he said, if I lose to you, this is the night before we shot, he said, I'm going to be the laughing stock of the whole of New Zealand. He didn't realise how offensive that was to me by saying that, actually, but, but he was like, and I said, no, mate, no, that people won't laugh at you if you lose to me. Like, look at me, you know? And he goes, exactly, look at you. Um, but so it was just an amazing time, and the challenges were hard, you know. I remember drinking a fish milkshake with, with curdled milk and sheep uh, and fish guts and stuff and just vomiting, vomiting. No toilets, no bedding, no nothing. That was one of the rules. You couldn't take anything. Oh, man. And, um, but in hindsight, again, it was, it was, I look back on it and I'm glad I did it, but I'd never do it again. After week one, and I, I don't know if you remember, but I, the judges scored me. I think I was the lowest of all of them. I got a four, a four, and a four out of ten. And one thing I was entirely underprepared for was the standing there listening to the judges critique your performance. And then when they say how bad you are, I was gobsmacked. Like I'm looking and you're trying to smile because you know the camera's right in your face. And they're going, four, look, I don't know what you think you're doing, Simon, but you you know, you just can't move. You've got to loosen up. You've got two left feet. And I'm like, I wanted to say, scream at them, say, hey, I know that. You asked me to be on the show. I know I've made a dick of myself, but I don't want to be here. That's what I wanted to say. And then, and then, but I am competitive, always have been. And so after that first week, uh, my dance partner, Vanessa, and I, we said, that is not going to happen again. And she can take the lion's share of the credit because she just said, we'll just work. And we worked, man. We, we trained. I was still doing the breakfast show, so we did, I'd finish that at 10 a.m. in the morning. And then I'd go to a dance studio and we'd rehearse. And the first few weeks we rehearsed from 10 till 3, 10 till 4, so six hours. In the last two weeks we were rehearsing 8 to 10 hours a day. Like just that was just rehearsal on top of the job. And then I'd fly to Auckland on a Saturday morning. We'd rehearse all day Saturday go to the hotel at night, I'd get to sleep Sunday morning, get up, rehearse all day Sunday, do the live show Sunday night. That was so stressful, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, just perspiring, just with the fear of performing. It was honestly like nothing I've ever done, the performance thing. And then Monday morning after the show, I'd get up at four o'clock, drive into the, or get a cab to the radio studio, I'd Skype the show, radio show, go to Candy Lane's dance studio in Auckland Monday and rehearse till 3, 4 and then catch a flight home Monday night back to Christchurch up the next day for the radio and I did that till the show finished. So I was completely spent by the end of it. But it was the thing for me was just the unbridled fear and nerves of doing a 90 second routine and fearful I was going to let Vanessa down, fearful I was going to humiliate myself, fearful I'd let my family down. <laughs> it was that. In hindsight, you know, again, I look back at these things and think, the good experience, but never again. I'd never do it again. Really hard. I've done this for 25 years, which staggers me now. Um, and I've seen it's such an evolution. And it's actually hard on the presenter. I'm quite a fragile person in that regard and maybe a bit sensitive, always have been. But in the old days, you just presumed everybody loved you because you, you didn't have that feedback. Now, uh, you know, you realise they don't. And it can be sometimes quite hard to actually read the stuff. A lot, and you ask like that same old thing you say to your children, you know, you get a hundred comments that love you 
and one negative, but you'll remember the negative. And it's a fact, it doesn't matter what age you are. So I guess you try to develop a, uh, a, a thicker skin. It's not always easy. I guess one word to describe how I feel about it is just grateful. I'm just thankful. I'm, I'm genuinely, with my heart, thankful for the opportunities I've had. Um, I've met some amazing people. I've been a part of some pretty cool shows. I've been on some iconic shows like What Now that are ingrained in New Zealand culture. And I just feel very, very privileged to have worked in an industry that's challenging and exciting and fun. And, um, you know, I don't think there's a day gone by that I regret anything that I was involved in. There's some disappointments, but I've loved it. And I just think it's a fun, fun ride.